Catalina began teaching Sunday school 40 years ago. She's raised two adult children who now help take care of her. They do really love me because they know that I did the work for them, take them to school, do the cooking, everything, because they all go out and I stay home and do all the work. My community here at Tawusi, the Catholic Church, my community, they all give me a hand. They help me. They all, they love, they, they support my children too, because they're working at the youth, just because I was working very hard for the church at serving as a Sunday school. And maybe I served the church for 40 years as a teacher. That's why they all come to visit me, because they knew how I work for the church. Catalina's a woman with a lot of heart. She didn't want to turn her back on the church and her children. She's found a way to continue teaching from home. Yes, this way. <laughs> I missed my Sunday school. Even I'm not going, but I had, I'm taking the, 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 the children's <coughs> lesson. So I write down my lesson and give it to the pastor to deliver to my children. Catalina's husband is always on hand to support her. But I delivered my lesson on papers, take them to the catechist, pass it out to my class, class seven, give them their questions to answer. They, they put back their, their books so I can correct their work. I just know that the children are doing their best. The Pacific Leprosy Foundation, based in New Zealand, built the house that Catalina lives in. St. Vincent de Paul also contributes. The family get no support from the Samoan government. Do you think people with disabilities get good support? They didn't give us money, except the money from the foundation, Leprosy Foundation in New Zealand. They're the ones who help us. But here in Samoa, nothing. I don't know about other people, but for me, no. Beautiful, beautiful, Jesus is beautiful, and Jesus makes beautiful things of my life. Catalina you know, feels dismayed by the stigma associated with leprosy and disability in general. She talks of feeling ashamed at having no feet. She's upset at the treatment of others with a disability. Disability should be in, at home, and people of the family must take care of them. That's the main priority. People have to love their people who are disabled. But I, I saw some people have not good what, mental illness. I blame their family for letting them come roaming around town and something to eat, uh, asking people for money. Yeah, I love them. I love this able be a person. when they become um, mentally unwell? Most of these people, they tend to look to the streets. As you might see today, probably around, there, there, there'll be quite a few of them out on the streets. Mm -hmm. Because um, the people, they're the people who are looking after them, especially for the mm -hmm. unstable mental side, families get fed up. They mm -hmm. can't, they don't know how to look after them, how to, how to keep them at home. Mm -hmm. So they just let them do whatever they want. People with mental illness find themselves ostracized, 
Remember, there's no welfare system here. The streets are the only place they can hope to make a few dollars. I have an auntie who, who, who is mentally unstable. She was, she was ed well educated in, in, in America. She moved back here to Samoa to, to train as a teacher and become a teacher. Um, during her teaching years, she, I would say, snapped. Mm -hmm. And her mental stability is, is no longer, no longer there. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's been up to the mental, mental clinic. Mm -hmm. um, she's been taken up there a couple of times because cops find her on the road totally naked in town now and then. But there is no counselling for these people. So there's um, just not the um, follow-up care. There's nothing. Mm -hmm. There's just no follow-up at all for mm -hmm. these people. And because we see her now and then out in the village mm -hmm. knocking on our door. Mm -hmm. asking for money to buy her cigarettes. It's always back to the financial side. Mm. They see people with disabilities. You know, what I've heard is it's a curse. You know, it's, it's, it's a curse. It's, it's brought onto the family by their ancestors or by their parents. And, uh, and that, that, that's where the culture sort of goes a bit, a bit weird for me. And it's also to do with uh, Sam Warns uh, being superstitious as well. It gets involved in that. You know, there's a Sam Warns saying, Ei ma tsulvin emotu, e ma nyinye nyi folfa nao. Um, which which uh, means, you know, it might be a little wonky on the translation, is that the parents eat the, 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 the rotten apple and the children bear the fruit of it. So it, it goes hand in hand, um, being superstitious and the religion that uh, being cursed. But I don't believe everybody, it's not a, it's not a curse at all. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing from God. It's to test people's faith on how strong their faith is. And that's how the religion should actually look at that. It's not that accessible, is it? No, it's <laughs> not, not at all. You know, that's why the streets of Sabmoor weren't built for wheelchairs. <laughs> and the tr people in their cars do not look. Back on the streets of Apia, I feel that stigma. Locals are staring at me. I'm grateful that I have to keep my eye on the footpath. It's no wonder people with disabilities stay at home. Yep. But people associate wheelchairs to old people. But see a young person like yourself in a wheelchair, it's a bit, <laughs> it's a bit weird for them. Because I've seen people kind of... Yeah, exactly. Kind of you know, like it's like, oh, you know, it's just like that little kid when he saw you coming around the corner, just stood back and started scratching his forehead. 